Hey guys, welcome back. And for today's video, we're going to discuss on the configuration of RetroArch. So let's start. Before we start our game, let us configure the interface and all the basic settings in RetroArch. So let's start. Let's begin by changing the themes. And to do that, let's head over to the menu. And under menu, let's proceed with the settings. And from the settings, Let's look for user interface. Once found, let us configure the following. So from here, let's select this menu. And then from this menu here, let's select the one of the themes we have here. So on my preference, I would select SMB. To take effect, we need to save all these settings in our configuration. And to do that, let's do the following. Upon this section here, click this back button. Then from our menu, click this main menu. Then from this section here, go to the configuration file. Then from our configuration file, click save current configuration. Once done, head back to our main menu, and from our main menu, click Restart RetroArch. And there you go. Please take note, all configuration that we're going to set this time is will be applied to any platform that you're working on. It could be a mobile, it could be in Windows OS. Since we're demo this on Ubuntu, it's still the same with other platforms. All right, so let's proceed to the other settings. At this point here, notice how are the menus and buttons were drastically changed. To navigate this one, we can simply use our mouse by pressing or scrolling up and down. Or simply use our mouse pointer to click for the selected menu. Also, we can use our keyboard by pressing up and down and left and right. For our settings, we want this to make it more simpler. So to do that, we need to eliminate or hide those menu that we, which is unnecessary and only view only those important ones. So let's start. To configure our display, Let's head over to our settings. And to do that, we can simply use our mouse or your keyboard by heading to this menu and look for user interface. Then under here, just click this menu item visibility. Then from here, let us configure the following. So the first one, I want to disable the show explorer. Okay, so this is already disabled. Next, I want to disable the show images. The next one, I want to disable also the show music. And this one, show videos. So there are also here. So let's say I'm going to include maybe this one, the show net play. All right. So verify those settings. If you are on this part, you can simply extend those settings. So feel free to explore and see what are the things that you want to show on your menu. So if you are okay, just head to the stop menu, then click this icon here. Then if you're in this section, click this icon on the top. Then select the first menu. Scroll down. Head to the configuration file, then click Save Current Configuration. Once done, head back again to the main menu by clicking this icon, and then click Restart RetroArch.
And there you go. Let's zoom it out. All right. Now it's much cleaner and much simplified. On the next step, let us modify the background and the themes itself. So to do that, let's head back to our settings. From our settings, head down to the user interface. Then under user interface, select appearance. Then from here, I want to modify the background. And to do that, Let's head over to this section here, this menu color theme. I want to change this to dark purple. And there you go. So I just want to make it simple as ever. But on your part, you can also modify all those selection here. So it depends on your preference or your requirements. So there's a bunch of configuration here if you want to modify your display. All right. Let's head back now to our main menu and save all those changes. And there you go. At this point here, let us work now with controllers. So let's start. To test with RetroArch, you can test any joystick that you have. This one here, I have bought this uh, two years ago from China. So this is the twin type joystick with the common end. And this is a, uh, a normal joystick that I buy in a retro games before. So either way, these are all uh, used in RetroArch. So if you have different models, it doesn't matter because the good thing with RetroArch, you can use, or it is what you can say compatible with the any version that you have. So later, I'm going to show you how it works. So let's start with the two joysticks. Then later on, I'm going to test the single one. So let's start. Before we start with RetroArch, I'll be showing you this uh, joystick that I have. So this is a twin type with a single end. So these are, uh, these are connected with a single USB cord. The good thing with this one is uh, it has these standard buttons from the common uh, joystick games that you are using right now. So if you're playing your, the modern type of joystick, this has also the same. So either way, so if if you are using this type, this is also a good choice when it comes to RetroArch. All right. So these are all bought from China. And the good thing is uh, they have all the standard basic keys that we are. Basically, if you are from the earlier days of 90s, so we really have much fun with this type of joystick. So right now, I'll be using this in RetroArch. So let's start. To test our joystick, we need to make sure that our joystick is readable. So let's plug it. Once you see this pop up on the left corner, this indicates that our joystick is readable. Now, if you want to know where these settings can be seen, just head over to our settings and head over to input. From here, it will be default to port control 1. There you go. So at this point here, you can see an index name twin USB gamepad. So you can also set all the controls by using this one and or configure all those buttons that you want to set. So you can pick any from the buttons here and do the necessary configuration. But for this demo, I prefer not to touch those things 
as long our gamepad or our joysticks already detected, that should be okay. So let's head back. Now that our joystick is detected, let us try the games in Award Retro Art. So let's start. From here, head over to the load content. From the load content, let's pick this downloads directory. Then for my demo, I'll be using this Sonic the Hedgehog. Then click browse archive. Then select the preference games here. There were cases that once you started with the games, sometimes you will notice that the joystick is not working. To fix this one, we need to reconnect our joystick. So let's start. But first, we need to zoom this out. At this point here, I cannot use my very own joystick. So to fix this problem, I just need to disconnect the USB and connect it back. And there you go. All right. At this point here, my joystick is workable. So let me try using my joystick for this game. All right, so this is cool. So as you can see, this gamepad is absolutely working for this type of game. The next one, I'll be using this second joystick. I bought this two years ago from China. So the good thing with this one is it has also this functional button here. So if you are playing, if you're playing Mortal Kombat, you can use this as the block portion or the high power. So the standard button still on place with a select and start and the up and down here. So let's see how it goes with this type of button. So let's start. For my second gamepad or joystick, I'll be using or install another types of game. So this time I'm going to head back to the load core. Then from here, let us check if we have the following. So I guess we are already here the Genesis. So I'll be using that. So I'll be load now the content. Then from here, I'm going to go with the download folder here. This time, I'm going to select this Sega Genesis ROM. So I'm going to pick one of the games from here. So let's say this Aladdin. Let's zoom it up. 
So since my by default my keyboard or my joystick is not working, I need to reconnect this one. And there you go. Cool. So let me try playing the game using this joystick that I have. Cool. So it seems, seems all the keyboard or the keypad is workable. So let's try. All right, so I guess everything is workable from this point here. Nice. So that's it, guys. From this point here, hope you enjoy this video content. And you can explore more from those settings that we discussed a while ago. And hopefully, this will help everyone who loves retro art. Once again, if you find this video informative, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And see you guys on the next video series. Cheers!